All right, let's see. Okay, can you all see this? Yes? Okay, awesome. All right, let me... Okay, so take a chill pill. Welcome to the take a chill pill workshop where we're going to talk about some stress things and then also a couple little study tips that I kind of thought would be kind of insightful and nice to think about. Um, if you have any questions or any comments or concerns, don't uh, be shy to chime in or put a little message in the chat and we can just have a nice little chill workshop today. So first off, I don't know if any of this is, applies to you, but I know some people might be like, I'm so stressed, I have a group project and my group isn't doing their work. And then I have this final for this class. I haven't studied, my whole life depends on this final. I have work tonight, I have no time, I've gotten no sleep. This is coming down to the last couple of days of finals and everything kind of piles on top of one another. I know a lot of people have some group projects, a lot of tests, final exams and everything, and it can be very overwhelming. So let's take a breather. And here are a couple of tips to kind of de-stress and kind of have moments to just recollect yourself and get your headspace and mindset ready. And so everything is just kind of like a breeze. It's like, you know, we can take a deep breath, guys. <laughs> okay, so my first tip, you are what you eat. So it's been proven scientifically that eating healthier food um, actually benefits your body and mind. Um, it actually correlates with a lot of stress. So the adrenal function is affected by blood and sugar levels. So the more like fatty fried food, um, saturated fats and everything, the more you eat, it's actually going to um, produce uh, more of the adrenal function, which kind of puts you on edge a lot of the time. So um, I looked up different articles and they say that pri prioritize protein because it um, slows the release of sugar in the bloodstream. So it's going to make you feel like more calm, more grounded. So it is very important that y'all, I know it's really hard, especially with how busy everyone is to kind of want to get like fast food, like really quick, easy food that um, just because of how busy we are, but really try to make sure that you guys are focusing on what you're eating because that's going to affect more than just, you know, your overall body function is going to affect your mental health as well, especially when it comes down to finals. We want to be in the best state we can. So, you know, like eat some eggs, eat some greens, some chicken, you know, throw in some vegetables because overall it is going to affect not only your physical feeling, but it's also going to affect kind of like your alertness, kind of um, your stress levels. So just take that into mind. And then also I know with school in general and life and um, work and everything, a lot of people rely on caffeine. So I just want y'all to know that there's a thing called caffeine overload. Um, it's going to actually cause a lot more harm than do you good. So I know a lot of people drink coffee to stay awake to, and then um, also drink like monsters, um, Celsius and like all those energy drinks. Um, those are fine, but just know that it can cause a lot of harmful effects um, that really aren't worth that, you know, extra hour of studying, extra like motivation and just alertness that you may think is going to be worth it in the long run because it can actually affect um, and cause insomnia, anxiety, and just an, an addiction and dependency on um, that alert feeling. Um, it kind of alternates, um, it kind of alters your alertness. Uh, so you want to find like alternatives for it. So you can find like um, different things that have lower caffeine amounts of that um, and also just lessen the consumptions. Because I know some people, some of my friends be drinking like five cups of coffee and I'm just like, whoa, we do not need that. Um, just know like it's not bad, but to not overdo it. I know it's a really tempting to want to stay up really late, to have that extra energy to get through all your finals, to get through work. Um, just to get through school to pay attention in class, uh, but just know that as much as the benefits do seem like it's going to help you, if you rely too much on it, it will harm you in greater ways. Um, and if you are someone that really likes drinking coffee, like two, three cups a day, um, just drink, make sure you're drinking a lot of water, because like I said, this is going to kind of alter your body's normal state. It's going to be a lot harder to actually kind of focus without this. And it'll also save you money if you can kind of wean off of like getting coffee and like Starbucks and on the, like all those things. So just keep note of that. If you're a huge coffee lover, like just, just remember that it's going to help you short-term, but will also harm you long effect if we kind of depend on it too much. So just remember guys, 
Everything you put in your body is going to affect you mentally and physically. So um, number two, quality over quantity. So I know a lot of people love pulling all-nighters or have been in situations where they feel like they have to pull all-nighters. Um, just letting you know that studying more hours on end will actually be more harmful. They, um, there are a bunch of research things going on right now saying that um, like the more you try to study and force yourself to do it, the more likely you will forget it. I have a couple friends that are pre-dent and for their um, dental exam, the DAT, they would spend like hours on end, like 12 hours, 15 hours at the library studying for this thing. And they get frustrated because when they take the their practice exam, they're not doing as well. And it's because they're spending hours and dedicating all this time on end trying to learn this material. Um, so like the more hours, it seems like it's going to help, right? So like I'm studying like 10 hours a day for this test, I'm gonna ace it. But the more you study, the more tired you're going to get. So just know that just because you stay up all night, just because you spend most of your day studying for this one thing, it might not have the results you want because you are just draining yourself. Um, so spending hours on end, it's going to withdraw you from social activity. It can cause sleeping problems. It can cause physical aches. Like sitting at a desk is not fun. Um, it's uncomfortable. Your body kind of like weakens as you keep studying, like poor posture. Um, it's just not comfortable. And like I said, it, it causes inflammation of the brain, which is just on end exhaustion, like your brain's working so hard, your body's just fatiguing, it's not worth it. So just realize that the quality of your studying beats literally like 10 hours of studying. So if you study a solid 30 minutes, that is going to be more beneficial than you studying for like three hours nonstop. So just keep that in mind. It's always quality over quantity. Um, because if you're studying for 10 hours and like for nine hours of it, you're just not in it, you're just reading blank things, it's going in one ear out the other, like well, what are you doing? You just wasted 10 hours, you know? So just remember that the quality of your studying is more important than dedicating a lot of your time to it. Okay, so let's take a step back. So how do we prevent this overstudying that a lot of us kind of fall into? A lot of us kind of, you know, procrastinate. We're all guilty of procrastination. And we've had moments where we're just like, okay, I did not study for this exam. I have like five hours to study for it. Let's do it. So let's listen to your body. If you're feeling tired, like go to sleep. If you're already in a mental headspace where you're just like, I'm so tired, but I have to study for it, like just go to sleep. Like take a nap, listen to your body because if your body's already kind of checked out of it, there's no way you're going to been like effectively retain and remember this information. Um, you wanna kind of break up your studying into blocks. Like, like I said, 10 hours, if you wanna study for like 10 hours, you can break that in. You don't have to do 10 hours um, consistently. So a lot of people um, study for an hour. And this is actually a direct quote from an article I found. Most people cease to maintain their level of productivity after 50 to 90 minutes of continuous work. Um, use break for well-being. So basically they're saying a lot of people have this good quality window of studying that's between 50 and 90 minutes of work. So that's like an hour and a half, not too long, but um, it's still a pretty good amount of time to get things done. Um, and then after this amount of time, they take a break. And this article was talking about during this break, like you want to do something that improves your well-being. So like mentally, physically, like you could go out to eat, you can call a friend, you can go on a walk, like something that'll make you physically feel good and then mentally. So sometimes for me, after I study for a couple of like hours or whatever, like two hours, I watch like an episode of like, I don't know, Love is Blind, like a dating show. I don't know, like something that kind of relaxes my brain, like gets me in a good mood, makes it think about something else, which sounds like a little um, kind of backtracking, kind of distracting your brain. But like I said, if you're focusing way too much on something, how much are you actually going to remember from it? Like you want to make sure your brain's going in different spots so it's able to remember the other things that you were studying um, effectively. Um, but like I said, just listen to your body. Like if you feel sick, uh, just go to bed, like take a nap, like take a 20 minute nap, take a 45 minute nap, like get your body and your mind aligned. And then you will effectively be able to like study and have your focus there. Um, and just like be there and kind of retain the information the best you can. So just listen to your body and then make sure that during any study breaks that you are, you know, doing something that benefits you physically, emotionally, and mentally. Okay. Number three, be nice to yourself. So I know a lot of us can be really hard and I know there's a lot of external pressures on us. Like 
uh like not wanting to disappoint like friends family yourself like your professors it's it's a lot it's a lot as a college student um but you have to be nice to yourself I know a lot of us find ourselves kind of being very negative like oh I'm gonna do terrible in this exam like oh my goodness I'm slacking I'm a procrastinator like just being really hard on yourself but we we're like our num like our we're the <laughs> what am I trying to say like if you're being mean to yourself that's just adding additional pressure to yourself you want to you know be positive be like you know what I really am trying to study for this class and because of my effort I'm going to do better like I'm going to pass this test like I'm a great student I'm just like any other college student who's stressed who wants to you know make other people proud of myself and everything like you have to be nice um because it improves your well-being and also puts you in a more positive headspace like if you're just talking down on yourself you're not going to have high expectations you're not going to get the outcome you want because you already place yourself in there because you're being um, not very nice to yourself. So how can we do this? So I wrote down five different things um, because I myself struggle with being nice to myself sometimes because I just feel like I have so many people to like impress, so many people to like, um, what's the word? Kind of like, you know, be like, oh, so many people that I don't want to let down, you know? And I feel like we can all relate to that in many different ways because we all have different situations going on. But um, with these five things, I feel like it becomes a little easier to kind of understand that it's not that deep. You can take a deep breath um, and take away this additional internal pressure you're putting on yourself, especially when it comes to, um, you know, making other people proud of you. So having a very strong support system. So like friends, family, like your, like, I don't know, counselors, like different people at UTSA, like your professors um, being positive. Um, so having that positive outlook that um, if this isn't going to matter in like a week, you know, like kind of take a break, take a step back, like kind of see that every failure and like every success is always an opportunity, always a moment to learn something. Even if you have the outcome you want, if you do pass an exam, like there's always something to learn from it, even though it doesn't feel like, oh, I passed it. Like, what do I have to learn from this? You know, like you, there's a takeaway to everything good or bad. So always just remembering that there is a light in every moment. Um, that's really important too. Um, speak things with confidence. So you want to be confident in yourself. And my friends always tell me that confident, like the key to being confident is to fake confidence. So if you're kind of a procrastinator and you feel like you're not going to do good on a presentation, like that you have the next day, just be like, you know what, I'm going to do fantastic on this. And like, it can be sarcastic and everything, but as long as you sound confident, it's kind of like convincing yourself that you kind of already know you're going to do good. Like putting yourself in that mindset, going back to positivity. It's just like, um, I will do great on this exam for my hard work. I deserve a break. It's going to put you in that better mood, which creates a better headspace for you, which will have a overall greater result than it could have been if you weren't confident, if you weren't positive. Um, acknowledge your feelings. So a lot of us kind of put our feelings aside sometimes and it's just like, oh yeah, like it's okay. It's fine. Like it's fine. Like I've only had four hours of sleep. It's fine. Like it's okay to be like, I'm so tired. Like I need to take a nap, you know, like acknowledge your feelings like don't lie to yourself because that kind of puts you in a bad position you know like you kind of have to accept like you know what? I'm really tired you know what I didn't really study for this I kind of didn't prioritize my studies today like I kind of goofed off but like I was tired I was mentally drained but like I did deserve this so just acknowledging your feelings and acknowledging your state of mind can really help you and also just take away that additional pressure of like being too hard on yourself and then focus on what you know instead of what could happen. So I know a lot of us kind of go down a slippery slope of, oh my gosh, if I fail this exam, this, that, like, you know, like we kind of go through that chain of events of like, if I fail this, then this is going to happen and that's going to happen, blah, blah, blah. You kind of want to stay present with like situations like these um, and just kind of point out the facts. So like acknowledging your feelings, like, hey, I'm kind of nervous. I'm about to take this exam. I haven't studied but I still have time to fix that. You know, I still have time to prepare for this. So focus on what you know and so what could happen. So fix what you can like right now and then, you know, let it play its course um, because we can get caught up in the future. But if you focus too much in the future, you're not going to focus in the present and that's going to, you know, alter the future. It's like the butterfly effect. So just remember to be nice to yourself because um, having that mental kind of healthy relationship with yourself is very important, especially with dealing with stress, because, you know, we're not going to be able to um, people please everyone. So we might as well kind of be on good terms with ourselves. you know, like you're, you're going, you're going to be your best friend all the time. So just remember to be nice to yourself. And that's going to take a lot off your chest.
Okay, learn to breathe. So I have these different, um, I'd have these two different meditation exercises that can be easily done. Like if you're at the library, if you're just studying at home. Um, so I'll just run through them. You guys can try them, you know, if you want. Um, but this one's called the 488 method. Um, so what you do, you kind of sit upright, um, kind of like in a chair with your feet flat on the ground. And then you're going to inhale through your nose for four seconds, like really nice and slow. And then you're going to hold it for eight seconds. And then you're going to exhale for eight seconds, like letting it out. So when you inhale, you want to breathe through your nose and then exhale out your mouth. And you kind of want to do it like three times. And it kind of just kind of centers your body and kind of focuses on your breathing, kind of like let go of your thoughts. What, um, what I like to do when I do this, um, I do something like this. I don't do exactly four in eight seconds, but every time I inhale, I kind of think about everything that's stressing me out. Like I think about, oh, I have this assignment. Oh, I have this project, blah, blah. Um, and then as I exhale, I just release it. It's kind of like a physical and like mental thing working together. So inhale all your stressors and then exhale and then just kind of let it out. Like, it's okay. It's going to be okay. And like, tell your mind that. And then your body's just also going to feel that physical relief. Um, so it's kind of like a mental release and then a physical release. So definitely recommend trying that. Um, and like, also close your eyes because it's better to kind of like visualize like all these thoughts coming in your head and then just visualize them like going out and like feeling that breath of air going out of your body. It's, it's pretty good. Um, so if you ever feel stressed and overwhelmed or really tired during your studies, take this little meditation break and do four seconds in, hold for eight, and then exhale for eight seconds. And hopefully that kind of like recenters you and helps you refocus and just know everything's going to be okay. Um, this next one's called a body scan. So you're gonna also be in the same position. So feet flat on the floor, upright posture. Um, you're gonna put your hands on your knees and you're just gonna breathe slowly, like in through your nose, out through your mouth. And what they're saying about this is you kind of wanna think about um, every part of your body like individually so when you breathe in the first time you're going to focus on your head and like you're going to breathe out and the next one you're going to think about like your chest and like your bot like your upper body and then breathe out and like arms like they just want you to focus on each different part of your body and then like by the time you're done with it you just want to think about your body as a whole and then release and then that's kind of the end of that exercise so that's kind of just like replanting yourself like kind of reminding yourself like you are here you are okay, like you are well. So it's kind of like also a very good mindful little um, breathing exercise there. So just remember when you inhale, um, it's through your nose and then exhale through your mouth. Uh, so these are just two little fun exercises I found that can be easily done that, um, you know, if you're in the library or just at home. So try them out. And if they work, um, that's awesome. Let me know how you like it. But yeah, those are just two little easy meditation exercises that I found um, for y'all to try. Okay, number five, you can say no. So I know this time, a lot of us like to pile up different things. We like, we all have friends, family. We all have like different organizations. We have um, exams, classes, we have jobs. You can say no, prioritize yourself. Like, I know it's really hard. Some of us, um, like me personally, I have a really hard time saying no. And because of this, my schedule is insane. Like I'm gonna hang out with my friends. I have this assignment due. I have like work, blah, blah, I have to see my family. And it just becomes really stressful that it takes away little chunks of the day that I could use to be studying or like de-stressing, like taking care of myself and my mental and physical um, well-being. So just remember that you are able to say no. Set boundaries with yourself um, because of like right now it's um, Thanksgiving. So just make sure that you're setting boundaries, being strict. Like I have to do X, Y, and Z so I can go home and spend time with my family. Or, you know, if you're not going home, like I still have to do this and that. Like I have to focus on this this week because that's the priority right now. I'm on a call. Okay. Um, sorry, that was my mom. Um, so just be strict with your time and just don't feel like you're obligated to do stuff. Like you're able to say no um, to people because you are in charge of your schedule. Like this is directly affecting your life. And this also kind of goes back to being kind to yourself. Like you, it's going to be impossible to make everyone happy. At the end of the day, like your happiness matters because like you are your own main character. So you're in control of your time. And if like, say a friend really wants to hang out with you, but you have an exam tomorrow um, and you're having like a really hard time to say no, like this is the time that where you have to prioritize your well-being, your, your, like, your life. Like you have to take control and be like, no, like I can't. So just becoming really strict 
with how your time is spent, and especially in times of a lot of stress, it's really important. Um, just overall, just remember that it's impossible to make everyone happy, okay? So you have direct control on your happiness and how you, like what kind of affects that. So just remember to have boundaries, um, be able to say no, prioritize yourself. Um, and like, I like to think, will this prevent me from my goals right now? So if a friend wants to go to a concert with me like this weekend, but I have a lot to do, I have a lot of exams this week, I'm going to be tired. Like, I'm going to say no, because I need like Saturday to kind of like recharge and everything, kind of take a break. Like, just remember that it's your life. Um, and yeah, <laughs> it's impossible to make everyone happy. So might as well make yourself happy by just setting firm boundaries with your time. Okay, number six, see the big picture. So I sent out a little uh, questionnaire thing in case y'all just had some advice you wanted. And one person asked like, how do we handle like failure? Like what are some tips to handle some failure? So I had an interview at a PT school and one person put this as um, like, you know, like in high school, you're kind of competing with one another to get like the top grade, to get in like top 10%. So you can have like that automatic admission, like in college and like grad school or wherever you go, um, that doesn't matter. You're going at your own kind of pace. So I struggled a lot with this because I was afraid I was going to graduate um, later than I was supposed to. And, you know, it's kind of like a bummer, like kind of thinking like, oh, my friends are going to graduate before me and then I'm going to still be in school. Like, blah, blah. you know, that feeling. But like what matters is that you have to see the big picture. So this goes back to kind of the boundaries. So understanding that this is your life, wherever, like whatever happens around you, like to your friends, to like your family, like any people that you care about um, and they reach their goals before you, like that does not affect you at all. Like that's their own race. You're on your own personal race as well. Like it's not even a race, it's a journey. Um, there's no set time that you're supposed to do something. So in our case with physical therapy school, like if we don't get in this year, if we don't get in next year, if we don't get in right after we graduate, it's not the end of the world. Like as long as you want to get in and you eventually get there, like that's it. And you know, on the time of like getting there, things can change. So just know that there's no set way to succeed as long as it's benefiting you, like kind of stepping back and seeing like, this is my life. Like I, at the end of the day, like I want to be a physical therapist. Like that's my goal. But if it takes me a while to get there or if it never happens, like, that's okay. You have to take away that exaggeration of like, that's it. Like, this is my set goal. Like, this is the only thing. And just kind of realize that, like, you don't have to go at the same pace as everyone else. Just seeing that failure is kind of an opportunity to, to like reevaluate. So if you don't get into PT school, like, is this really what I want to still do? Like, should I reapply? Should I take more time? Like, reassess that. Or if you see like another calling, like, kind of like you're on the track to a PT route, but then you also see like, oh my gosh, like this actually sparks my interest way more than physical therapy does. Like there is no set way to get there. There is no set time. Like as long as you are happy, like that's enough success. That's all you need there. Like as long as you see failure as a, a, a place to grow and learn, like you're not really failing at anything. Um, but it does stink to kind of like, you know, like not get what you want but everything is an opportunity and kind of stepping like stepping back seeing that this small little thing is so small and like this huge picture like how much is it actually going to affect you know so here's like an example I put um if I fail this test I'll never get a job <laughs> like how is that in any way like related uh so you kind of want to think about it like if I fail this test I'll find new ways to study you know like you have to take away the exaggerated things the like oh my gosh like this is do or die you know take a step back see the big picture and realize that you are in charge of your own journey and like if it takes you five years to become a PT if it takes you like 10 years it doesn't matter like you're not racing or competing at, against anyone like you are in charge of yourself like it's just a walk day by day to get where you want to be so kind of just accepting that bigger picture like failure is not really that it's just you know you have to kind of shift your mindset and understand that it's more of a learning uh concept and kind of just like you know take it as an opportunity to to change and learn and grow so just remember to see the big picture and don't hyper fixate on like a small corner of that picture like see bigger okay number seven write it out so journaling is really helpful for me and i know like some people really like it too but it's also just a great way to like physically kind of get it out there so 
You can let out your thoughts, your worries, fears, stressors. You can self-reflect on your day, how you're feeling like in the moment of journaling um, and think about like different things. So I like to think about like, how is this event benefiting me? What happened today that I really liked? Um, what bad things happened today? You know, just like writing literally anything and just kind of focusing on like, what are my goals? So maybe try journaling. Um, it can be nice. I know some people like to burn like their um, journal entries, like throw them away, like tear them out. Um, whatever you do, like if you haven't tried journaling, try it, see how it works. Like there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's just a good stress reliever. So you can try that out. Um, vocalize it. So what I like to do, especially when I'm, if I'm driving and like, I feel really stressed, I like to make a voice recording. Um, and like, it kind of mocks like being on the phone with someone. Um, and just like talking about my day, like, oh, this really bothered me, blah, blah, blah. Um, and like physically talking about it makes it feel like it's just like out. Cause I know, um, if you kind of just think about it, it's just going to be on your mind all day. And it's like, it physically doesn't feel like you got it off your chest. So this is a thing I like to do a lot. Um, just making a little voice memo, just talking to myself, um, because it does help to hear yourself saying these things, um, acknowledges your thoughts. It validates like the state you're in at the time. And you get that physical feeling of relief of just like saying it off your chest. So it also help, helps um, to refocus thoughts. So it's just like the physical aspect of hearing yourself saying it and then also feeling yourself saying like the thoughts in your head. So that's also another great way to kind of get rid of all this stress. Um, so yeah, maybe give that a shot if you've never tried that before. It's, it's very helpful. I have grown to love this way of kind of de-stressing, especially because if you don't want to be on a phone call with like someone for like an hour, just because you just want to ramble, like this is, this is a great way to do it. Okay. Number nine, sit outside. So get some fresh air. I know that sounds really cliche, but, um, kind of being outside in a different environment from like the library, your room, like wherever you're studying, it kind of reminds you that there, there's like so much more to the world than like studying for whatever it is, like doing homework. Like it kind of just like, what is it? It focuses on other things. So like focusing on like, like people watching. I love people watching, like thinking about, I wonder what's going on in their life. Like, you know, it kind of takes away um, what's going on in your life and kind of like uh, shifts your um, focus to like what's going on around the world. Like, oh, like the pretty sunset, like the moon's out, the stars out, like kind of just seeing like, we're so small and there's so much more to this. Like they're like, th like, you know, exams are important, but then realizing that there's so much more to the world than like, your studies right now. It's just like a good mental break and just kind of helps you and then also helps you feel peaceful. Um, and then studies have shown that it also decreases your heart rate and cortisol levels. So like also really um, getting rid of that stress feeling and everything. So it's a good change of environment. It rests your eyes. And then it also just kind of gives yourself that mental break and that nice clean feeling of just like, wow, like the world's so big and I'm so small. Like <laughs> it kind of just, you know, it refocus your, refocuses yourself. So you should try sitting outside as a nice little break. Okay, number 10. So keeping your area clean, keep it clean. So um, I like to just start with my room. So just making sure that my room's like organized pretty clean, um, just because a messy environment can cause more stress. So if you come home and you decide to like study in your room and your bed's not made, your laundry's all over the place, like that's another like external stressor. Um, so your physical surrounding can be overwhelming and it can cause more stress. Like, oh, I have to clean. Like, oh my goodness, I have so much to do. My clothes are dirty. Everything's all over the place. Um, your rooms are supposed to be a relaxing kind of place. So you want to make sure that it's kind of like a clean area, just so when you come home and do whatever you need to do, it's not going to add like that external stress on you. Um, so it's also just going to help you decompress. So um, this is a thing. I don't know if y'all have heard of this thing but it's just like make your bed every morning because it's kind of like the first thing you'll do when you wake up and it gives you like this sense of achievement um and it also kind of helps with like the messy aspect of it so it kind of gets rid of that constant reminder of how scattered and or un unorganized you are um and it's also going to create good habits and it's going to start your day with like a clean state of mind like a positive state of mind and like i said it's going to give you that feeling of accomplishment so if you just start with just making your bed every morning it'll kind of get you going for the day. Like, wow, I did one thing and now I'm ready to do this and that and that and just absolutely crush it through the day. So just remember to try to keep your area clean because physical surroundings have a great um, role in just how stressed you are. 
Okay, so how can I study better? So here are a couple things that I came, I think I only have like five things, but try new methods. So I know some of us can kind of hyper fixate on old study habits like we had in high school or like um, the first couple semesters of college, but just try new methods. So like, I'm a huge Quizlet girl. Like I would make Quizlets for everything. But recently I found out that videos really are helpful. Like <laughs> looking up different videos, um, looking at different pictures, uh, diagrams, like even studying with like a friend, it helps a lot. And um, I don't know if there's other people that are stubborn like me, but kind of just going outside of the box, thinking outside of the box and just trying different methods. It keeps your brain very active and very like flexible with different ways of retaining information. And then you kind of figure out like, oh, I really like this. So like making flashcards, watching different videos, um, like pictures and everything. Um, and you know, like with kinesiology, um, I'm assuming most of us are kinesiology majors just because of physical therapy, like group studying is so important because of all the movement and then also incorporating all the different muscles and how they move. So having that partner, being able to see them perform that movement and also seeing what muscles are being activated, what muscles are relaxing, like that's super beneficial. So if you haven't, if you're kind of like hesitant on group studying, definitely try it, especially when you get in like musculoskeletal anatomy and like anatomy and all those classes that are going to be really focused on the body. Because what's great about our major is that like we have our own personal textbook, which is ourselves. Like if we kind of understand where everything is, where everything attaches, what's getting activated when we move, like that's going to be a huge advantage because like you can literally use yourself for that. So try new methods of studying. Um, so this is a study method called the Pomodoro technique that I looked up. So the first step of it is you're going to identify a task. You're going to set a timer for 25 minutes. And then after those 25 minutes are up, you're going to take a five minute break. So going back to what I said earlier, doing study breaks, you kind of want to do something that affects um, your well-being. So your physical and emotional, mental well-being. So you could like go get a snack, go sit outside, like wash your face, kind of like feel clean and feel better. And then you're going to go back to study for another 25 minutes. And you're going to repeat this three times. And then after the third time, you're going to take a 30 minute break. So this kind of, I really like this because it's really emphasizing like the thing I talked about quality over quantity. So really focusing on like a solid 25 minutes of studying and then a short little break. But then, you know, after doing it three times, you get a reward of like a longer break. So it's not like you're getting a huge break where you kind of like are in this relaxed, like, okay, like I did my part today. I'm not studying anymore. Like after like a two hour nap, it's like, yeah, like I'm checked out. This kind of keeps you going and active and kind of keeps your brain um, like still running, but then also allowing it to relax for a short amount of time to get that quality of studying in. So definitely try this out. Um, so like I said, just set a timer 25 minutes, then five minute break, and then repeat that three times. And then you have a 30 minute break. Um, a lot of good results have come from this technique. So if you try it, let me know how that works. I'm definitely gonna try it because it does sound really nice to only study for 25 minutes and take a break, then studying for like two hours and then taking like an hour break. So definitely, Try that if you have not already kind of have a technique like that. Uh, the next thing, YouTube. Um, I personally don't like reading a textbook or reading my notes sometimes. And there are so many people on YouTube that will do it for you. Literally just look up whatever you're studying. So like anatomy, if you're looking at the muscles of like the hand or like whatever, like people dedicate their time and creativity to make amazing videos for you to watch. Um, and it has great visuals, like great mo models. And like, it teaches you all these different things. Um, it requires, it like allows you to take a break from kind of like reading and like processing what you read and retaining that information that you read and allows you to just, you know, sit back, listen, and watch. So it allows like other senses of yourself to like just relax, but then also have someone explain it to you. So it doesn't require that um, motivation to actually learn it yourself. You have someone kind of teaching you um, as well. So that really helps a lot because there are so many people on YouTube that dedicate their whole life to making these lectures and like helpful ways to study different content. So definitely give it a uh, YouTube a go, especially if you're not a big reader like me, like there are great sources online that'll help you study, especially if you're in musculoskeletal anatomy. I found so many videos that really help with kind of learning where the muscles are, what's being activated and everything like that. So give it a try if you're not really if you haven't really done that yet, like YouTube has so many different great videos on there. Okay. Okay. Number four, set a reward. Um, so having a reward after you kind of finish studying, it's going to help you focus. It's going to also restore that motivation. So 
like I said, if I study for 30 minutes, I can have 15 minutes of TikTok or like, you know, go outside. Like I can order myself food tonight, like takeout and everything. Um, it's going to make you want to do that thing. You know, it's going to kind of put yourself in that competitive mindset with yourself. Um, and it kind of validates your hard work. So um, if I'm studying for an hour and I don't get anything out of it, like what's the point of that? But if I study for an hour and then I reward myself with getting a snow cone, like you're going to feel pretty good about that. So um, about yourself, so it's going to boost your energy, um, motivate yourself to focus. And then also it's just going to make you feel good overall. Like you really did accomplish something and that's something to reward yourself for. Um, so some examples are like a nap, takeout food, going out with your friends, like, you know, going to happy hour or something, just hanging out with them um, or like watch an episode or watch a movie of something. So just kind of set a personal little uh, reward just to make sure that you are feeling good about like what you accomplished in that set time zone that you were going to have for studying. Okay. And then the last one, understand why. So a lot of us kind of have this mindset. I could, I could say like, where we memorize the answers. So, um, but like, you know, that's nice. Like up until like grad school, when you're getting ready to leave college, like you kind of understand that it's not more about memorizing the answers. You have to kind of understand like why, why, like um, in elementary school, I remember my teacher kind of telling me when I'm doing a multiple choice question, like trying to fill it out, like for the answer I chose, right. Like I have to know the reason why it's right and why the others are wrong. Um, so kind of just seeing studying more as a chance to learn more instead of memorize is also really important because if you're able to tell me why one answer isn't right, like that's showing that you have knowledge more than just like kind of memorizing one answer, you know, like if you can explain to me why two plus two equals four, instead of just saying just because like it's two plus two, it equals four, like duh, like everyone knows that if you're able to break it down, that's kind of like understanding the more like mastery concept of it. So as you're going through your studies, just make sure you're kind of understanding like why it's the right answer, not just like, yeah, this is the right answer because like the book says so. Like kind of shifting your focus of studying is gonna help you a lot, especially if you um, go to grad school um, and kind of take harder cl like classes, it will make your brain work in a different way than kind of just like memorizing like, oh yeah, like that's the answer, <laughs> you know? Um, it allows a deeper understanding, so really just try to focus on like those objectives in textbooks. I know a lot of us like to skip the first few pages of like the introduction and of a chapter, but like those are important, especially like looking at the back, like looking at those review questions, like you should be able to answer every single one of those or just use that as a study template for like any exams you have. And then also like using the glossaries, using the index in the book, like looking up key phrases, like if you have trouble with them, um, like abduction, like the movement of abduction, like you can look in the index and see every time it's mentioned in the textbook and you can get a different kind of aspect of like when it's used, like abduction of like the leg, <laughs> the arm, like you can just see like different realms of that term being used and like the concept of it and it will allow a deeper understanding and help you understand why. So that's something y'all should kind of maybe consider just, you know, I know it's hard. A lot of us, it, like me too, like I just want to memorize the answer, but really understanding why that is the answer is really crucial. Um, so try to incorporate that in your studies as well. So that's all I have for you guys, but like literally take a deep breath. Like I know it's really scary, um, especially just because, you know, we do have high expectations for ourselves as um, students, especially as students that are pursuing a profession like physical therapy. It's really, it's really scary. Um, just know that everything's going to be okay. And just remember, this is your own personal journey. Don't compare yourself to other people. Um, whatever happens is meant, is meant to happen in your life. Um, just know that the first thing to be successful is with, is just being healthy within yourself. So just making sure you're being nice to yourself, making sure you're surrounding yourself with positive people, positive thoughts. And if you are mentally in sync with your body, like in great health, like everything will be okay. Um, I promise you everything's going to be great. And I know a lot of people are getting piled up and stressed, but just remember you're allowed yourself, you're allowed to give yourself the time of day. You're allowed yourself, you're allowed to give yourself a break and everything. So just take a deep breath. Everything's going to be okay. Try those meditation techniques. Um, remember to eat healthy, take care of your body, take care of your mind. And that's already one thing out the window. If you can control your stress, you'll be okay. Um, so I hope you guys like these. I really appreciate y'all coming out. 
uh, tonight. Um, I try to keep it as short because, you know, just because of the, the holiday and then finals and everything. But here is, yeah, you got this. Here's the QR code for the sign-in. I'm going to stop sharing real quick. Oh, wait. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to send the link in the um, thing. I did not think about that real quick. Um, 